Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. I've called this video the exposure clock. The point I think needs to be made is that despite the power of software like Photoshop and Lightroom and others too, and also the fact that we're shooting raw images, exposure still remains the most important aspect to producing top class images of the highest quality. Let's assume that my exposure clock at 12 o'clock represents the optimum exposure, meaning it's the best exposure we could hope to achieve from whatever scene was in front of us, given the lighting conditions as they were. Maybe you'll notice that I didn't call it the perfect exposure because really there's no such thing. Every exposure is a compromise. Can I also ask you to accept for the sake of this short video that the left side of the clock represents underexposure, then of course the right side represents overexposure. In an ideal world, 12 o'clock is what we should be aiming for to capture the very best exposure, which in turn is going to give us the best image quality and visual appeal. We know that we don't live in an ideal world and that sometimes our exposure can slide a bit towards underexposure, let's say here at 5 to 12. Although we have drifted a little way from the optimum exposure, 5 to 12 isn't so far away that we can't make adjustments for that underexposure in let's say Photoshop or Lightroom. Now we can make the same argument if our exposure slips a little to perhaps 5 past 12. A small amount of overexposure is likely to be something we can recover from, again using software like Photoshop or Lightroom. But let's just stop at this point for a moment and think about this. Even if we're shooting raw images, which have a much wider latitude than JPEGs. And even if our skills with Photoshop and Lightroom does allow recovery from this 5 to 12 to 5 past 12 exposure range, even so, there's generally going to be some trade-off in image quality. Now, sometimes that trade-off will be acceptable or unnoticeable. Sometimes it won't. On occasions, I think we all experience what I've just described here. But there are some amateur photographers who seem to be happy to work within an exposure range like this. They rely on their image editor just a little too much. This exposure range becomes their norm, their standard. The trouble with this approach is that it's very easy for this exposure range to roll just a little bit further one way or another, let's say into underexposure. Now you're going to have to deal with an image where the underexposure is going to cause real problems. All it takes are some bright areas of your subject to fool the camera into giving less exposure than it really should. It's going to make image editing much more time consuming, if in fact it's possible at all and it's going to affect image quality. Then of course, if this exposure range can slide one way, it can very easily slide the other way of course. All it takes is some shadow in your subject to fool the camera's light meter into giving more exposure than you really needed. Your sensor's dynamic range has to be able to cope with these exposure errors and still deliver a good quality image. And it may not be able to do that if we go too far with under or over exposure. But more importantly, you need to be able to cope with this range too, meaning the further you are away from the optimum exposure, the more editing skills and experience you're going to need to recover from them. I see lots of situations where the gap between the optimum and the actual exposure is wider than the author's ability to bridge that gap. 
Trying to recover from blown out highlights will be tricky, if not impossible, depending once again on your image editing skill level. As a general rule, I found that some blocked up shadows seem to be much easier to accept from a visual point of view than blown out highlights. And when we start to work on an exposure which is quite away from the optimum, it can sometimes seem that as we fix one problem in our image editor, we raise two more, which is frustrating, especially to those who at the same time are trying to learn how to use image editing software. If we stray much further into overexposure, let's say to a quarter past twelve, now we're really in trouble. We can find ourselves dropping images that we spent a fair amount of time and money to capture into the bin. The same with underexposure, and sometimes we tell ourselves those pictures didn't come out, as if that is some consolation. Well, they would have come out had the exposure been given the attention it deserved. Here's the thing. In high contrast light, like bright sunny conditions, or we have a high contrast subject, that could be a bright building with deep shadows, getting to that optimum exposure is even more difficult because your exposure actually needs to be far more accurate than it may need to be at any other time. Think about this for a moment. If contrast is high, your exposure needs to be right in that sweet spot because you have to capture what is best for the highlights and the shadows. Then you're going to have to work in your image editor to raise detail from the shadows and possibly to reduce highlights too. Now this is a very delicate balance so you can't afford your exposure to lean towards under or over exposure at all in these circumstances. It has to be far more accurate. The exposure has to be accurate because we're going to have to squeeze the best from both the highlights and the shadows and that's not always easy to achieve. In these bright contrasty conditions the photographic content that we're framing up on can very easily bias the light meter away from that sweet spot. A dominance of light or dark content in the subject can very easily fall and sway the light meter one way or the other, especially if we're not paying attention. So if in doubt, use exposure bracketing. In the right hands, image editing software like Photoshop can perform near miracles. But think about this too. If they can do that, just think what they can do if we can capture a slightly better exposure in the first place. Thanks for watching and I hope the video was of some use. Exposure really is the most important step towards good images. It was with film and little has changed with the digital age. If you're struggling with exposure, take a look at my camera craft videos which will take you through exposure and a lot more in full HD videos. Looking back over 45 years experience, exposure is something I wish I'd got to grips with much sooner than I did. I relied too much on the sophisticated camera thinking it was foolproof. It wasn't then, it isn't now. Come along to our website and you'll find camera craft and many more videos on photographic subjects. Look out for our Photoshop for Photographers course too. If you're watching on YouTube, the links to those videos can be found below in the Show More section.